Thanks everybody for attending this meeting of the Riverside Cemetery trustees, as well as a master plan discussion with uh, Martha Lyon, uh, landscape architect, who's uh, done not just yeomans, but just brilliant work setting up the cemetery for the potential of the next 100 years. So uh, myself, Jan, Mike are here, Wendy's here, Martha's here, FCAT's here. Who's FCAT? Come on. Patrick. Patrick's here. He's <laughs> behind the camera. So anything that goes wrong, Patrick, Pat, <laughs> FCAT. Anything that goes right, Martha. <laughs> the, rest, the rest of okay. us are here to listen and to uh, explore the future. Well, thank you, Sunderland, for tuning in. This is such an exciting project, uh, such an exciting piece of property, and I'm so pleased to be able to work on it. Um, it's been five years ago now. Uh, I was hired along with my colleagues from Monument Conservation Collaborative to do a long-range plan for Riverside Cemetery. That is the six, almost six-acre property located right in the town, the middle of town, um, on the river. And it is a very old cemetery, and it is still active. And oftentimes you don't see that in New England. The older cemeteries are closed. They're not accepting any more interments. But the cemetery is act very active. And um, I'm here tonight to just give you a, um, a little bit of a brief summary of what we studied and what we um, found out, and also what we're recommending that the town think about for the future um, as they preserve and protect and also steward um, future growth of the cemetery. So you can swipe. We might be having some swiping issues. OK. So uh, when, when you, master plans um, typically have several phases or components to them. In the case of this one, uh, I, would, I would say there were four to be um, four. And I'm going to go through each of those really briefly. They are here, the program, historical research and period of significance, and then the inventory and assessment. And these steps are all important, especially the first three, because they help build um, what ends up being recommended as part of the, the real meat of the plan. So we will start with the program. And this is not a program that you get handed when you walk in to see a musical performance. <laughs> this is a program that we, the Cemetery Commission, and myself, and MCC, came up with together for what is needed for this property, this historic property. And we defined these, I should say, really say the commission was the one who told me, but we worked on this together. Um, these are the main things that you're concerned about. The trees and overall beautification of the property, the road network, its function, its condition, the monuments and the markers, which are a um, very important part of the landscape, the shed, which is uh, still standing, and there's some concern about it not looking as great as it could. And then I think finally, and lastly, and most importantly, is what I'm saying is infill here, but this is how do we make the most of the land that we have um, that's available to us right now for interment? So I'm going to go through each of these. Uh, well, go ahead. Go on the next one. Okay. So let's just give you a little bit of a brief, brief overview of the history of this wonderful property. Um, we always start when we talk about history of land with the first uh, known in term. Um, in inhabitants, and in this case, they were an indigenous tribe called the Narwatics. Probably many of you are familiar with that because that name has been applied to our famous rail trail. But this is a tribe that was located in the upper part of Massachusetts on the Connecticut River. And they hunted and fished and really had a very strong connection to the land. Um, when the first Europeans came here, and it was in the 1670s, they came up the river from Wethersfield, Connecticut. And unfortunately, what happens is either there's a, 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 a skirmish and a lot of people get killed, or the Europeans who are kind of um, diseased people would come and give their diseases to the natives who had absolutely no immunity to them. And that, that really killed off a lot of our indigenous people. So as I said, the Europeans first came up in the 1670s. 
from Hadley. And the area uh, to the north of Hadley was called Swamp Field um, because it was largely meadow and low-lying land along the river and, and uh, apparently quite swampy. And if you could just imprint this map in your head, um, you can see that sort of a very rough early layout of Sunderland. We'll go to the next one. <clears throat> Um, in 1714, the settlers uh, drew 40 home lots, which was very typical of New England at the time. They would draw home lots, and each um, settler would get a piece of land. A lot of times it was a small piece of town in the village, and then they would have a wood lot outside. Um, there were extensive meadowlands around, along the river at the time. And we know that the burying ground, and I'm calling it that because at the time it really was just a burying ground, was established on one acre. Uh, sometime between 1714 and 1717, so sometime be be between when the home lots were drawn and um, around 1717. And the first known interment that took place was in 1722, and that is the stone, that is Elizabeth Graves. This is her stone carved out of a native material, as you can see, very uh, humbly carved, but quite readable. Uh, died in 70, 1772 at 29 years of age. And that is not to say this is the oldest burial in this uh, piece of land. It was established in 1714. There could have been other deaths that either went unrecorded or unmarked or impermanently marked um, or all of the above. So she's the oldest that we know of. Okay. By 1830, the folks who were running the town began to get really concerned because the one acre crop, um, plot that was serving as the only place of internment was getting full. And so in 1833, they acquired some more land on the north side of the original acre, and then in 1867, some more land on the uh, north side of the, north side of the um, second, first acquisition. <clears throat> What was different about these two additions is these were planned and plotted pieces of land, which means that they, the people running the town and who were overseeing this cemetery took the time to plot out individual plots that would be sold, in this case, likely to a family, where they can inter a number of related individuals next to one another. And very typical. this was very typical at the time um, the mod this is t was the indication of cemeteries becoming modern. Um, before that, there were just burial grounds, and individuals would be buried next to each other, or maybe not even related. But you can see here, top of pointer, this is uh, what we call a stele. This big monument. It's not. It's not working. Yeah, that's working. It's just bouncing off the screen. Can't see it. I can't see it. So forget it. <laughs> so stele being the stele marker is here. And around that are likely uh, members of the family. And typically the, the big marker was in the middle, and then the smaller markers would surround, kind of like the patriarch is in the middle of the family, and sometimes the matriarch with the patriarch, and then the children are all around, and so forth. And what's that called, the steel? Stile is the name of the type of marker, marker this is. Obelisk, stile. Right? It's an obelisk, yeah. Monument. Um, and, and many of the monuments um, in Riverside do contain Victorian symbolism. Um, in, uh, there are going to be some later images of that, but you'll see like the wheat shaft or the urn or the shroud. Those things are all very much um, typical of the Victorian era or the, you know, the mid to late 1800s. Okay. Um, let's So more changes came at, in the late 1800s, 1870 um, to, to the early part of the 20th century. Um, at that time, the road was added from Main Street leading back into the cemetery, and the system of roadways were laid out. And this is a great image because you can really see um, the additions of land. I think this picture was taken in 1869. No, it might have been 1879. But anyway, it doesn't matter. The old section is in here. Uh, excuse me, is in here. And then this is one new section, and then the second new section, and then there was another section added here um, along the north side. And it was 
elaborately planted. Mm, there was a perimeter road going all around it. And uh, at, at, after this photo was taken, there was a fence built around it. We have records of that. And one of the things I think is remarkable about this image is uh, the view to the river, which is really, you know, you can't right now see the river at all. So it was really a very picturesque kind of place. But still nestled into the farmland, just like it is today. So if I could, Martha, this, this, all of the infrastructure you see here is existing currently. It is. Yep. Yep. So yep, center road. Yes. North road. Right. And then there's addition. And then there was also a cemetery commission, a committee established by the town at that time. And when that happens, you know, we're kind of in business. You know, we've got a group of officials or in volunteers or appointees who are overseeing this property. And am I seeing a white structure down there in the corner? Yes, a hearse house. A hearse house. Got it. Yeah. Hmm. And there was a hearse house for quite a long time. Okay. Next. Mm -hmm. okay. Come on, finger work. <laughs> Try that again. Ah, great. And then the 1930s come along, and we start to make some improvements that we would consider to be modern and not necessarily compatible with the historical uh, image that you saw earlier. One is that the roads, which were likely dirt or gravel, were paved with asphalt. And that happened all over the place in almost every cemetery I've worked in that has roads. Then in the mid-1900s, um, asphalt became a popular material. There was a new maintenance building built, flagpole was donated, and then land was added to the south side so that it expanded uh, southward and uh, 132 new lots were provided at that time. And this is the, so the, you can see the southern end of it here yeah. in the view of the Holyoke Ranch, which is great. Okay. And organic asparagus. <laughs> no longer there. No longer yeah. there. No, okay. <laughs> So this image uh, shows you exactly how those different styles break down, and I'll talk to you about them. So the first is the colonial style. This is the one acre that I talked about earlier. And as I mentioned, uh, this style was very much um, what we would call vernacular. Um, it was not planned or plotted. We did have the acre, but typically these, these um, early colonial burial grounds had no circulation in them, no paths. Uh, the land is, was often not manipulated at all, so this is not true here because you're basically in a floodplain and it's flat, but early colonial burial grounds, often you'll see the land for it is kind of lumpy or hilly, and it's because it just hasn't been altered, you know, the people were interred and the town didn't touch it after that. Um, and the trees that would have been growing in here obviously would have been native at the time, so we're thinking about things that are all dying today, like the sugar maples and the white pines and the spruces and all that stuff. So. Um, but that's what would be here. The Victorian style, which I'm calling, you know, coming into play in the 19th century, it really occupies this whole chunk here. And this is, as I mentioned before, the plant and plotted, um, you know, the family plots, often with the, you know, the one central monument. A lot of, and you don't have this in Riverside, but a lot of cemeteries, the, the plot will actually be outlined with curbing, or sort of sometimes a fence. Um, it was really like building a home for the dead. Um, in the cemetery. And the Victorians had a different relationship to death than we do today. So it worked for them. And um, you know the roadway, roadways gave access uh, to the you know the burial areas. And at that time, you know, there was a lot more plant material available because plants were being uh, imported and there were also the nurseries had strong up sprung up and they were um, propagating. So you would have a much more diverse selection of trees at the time. And then the modern style, which you see at the outer edges, this is uh, you know, what we see um, in a lot of uh, you know, cemeteries to today where, where what dominates are these standard 30-inch high granite markers that have two interments associated with them. And the one, I don't know if I can do this, I can go back one. Can I, I don't know. <laughs> This is what I'm talking about. Right. And these are, you'll see this in every, and they're still being used to this. So they were started using in the 1900s, and they're still very popular today. It's what every gravestone monument dealer will sell. Sells. Huh. Usually polished, sometimes they have some rock face, and that's it. 
And so, as a style, you're saying that this this is not just both current but happening all the time. This style. Yeah, it's very it's even for this. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Um, That's interesting. Yeah. Next one. Yeah. We'll go, we'll go more. So I want to, so does anybody have any questions about this? So what I want to say to you is that, before you, before you ask questions, your questions, questions, is that, no, okay, okay, that uh, Riverside Cemetery, um, what is contained in that six acres is a, a representative, representation of various cemetery styles. And uh, it's important, you know, thinking ahead to the future, what um, what those look like, and to retain that style as much as you can. So in the colonial era, era area, you know, you don't want to, you're not going to be altering this anyway, but you want to really keep it as is and not add, you know, any kind of uh, modification to it. The Victorian era, again, you know, we're talking about the family plots, so you want to honor the outlines of those. Um, if you were to do any kind of tree replanting, you could look at some different kind of species that were more uh, common, um, new for introductions that, in the 19th. For that time. Yeah, yeah, that time. And then the modern style, I think you have a lot more leeway with, and we're going to talk a little bit about that at the end, especially this area here, which has not been fully developed. It's awful close. <laughs> <laughs> as far, not as far as infill goes, but it's amazing if you look at the map how much of that southern section has been sold even in uh, like even in our here. turn. It's yeah. up in here. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Good. Okay. So then let's talk about the existing conditions. I'm sure you're more familiar with them than I am. And again, I haven't been at the cemetery in a few years, so things may have changed a little bit, but this is what we saw and what we assessed, our assessment was. I saw the pain. Maybe I'm not reaching it. Maybe your fingers are cold. Ah, there we go. Okay, so today, the cemetery Still sits in this lovely setting um, with Mount Sugarloaf and Mount Toby to the south or to north, excuse me, and kind of northeast and northwest, and the Holyoke Range to the south, which is a tremendous asset. Um, it really adds to its beauty. <clears throat> but some of the um, the issues related to that is, as I mentioned, the views of the Connecticut are very blocked by dense cre tree growth along the bank, and I know this is a very sensitive um, natural area. So any work that gets done there um, has to, you know, go through a permitting process, which I'm not going to go into detail about. But it's just something to think about because think about that photo that we saw that was taken in the, you know, 1870s. You really, it was a totally different uh, feel. Um, the, some of the roads in the cemetery um, are not used very much, and much of the asphalt is in poor condition unless you've gone in and repaired. Good, very good. Okay. Uh, at the time, and this may have changed because I may have had some tree work done, there were eight, 87 deciduous and evergreen trees. The species mix was f predominantly maples, 46%, 15% oaks, and 10% dogwood. The Kusa dogwoods are growing on the north side. Mm -hmm. And then a healthy mix of other tree species. Just a comment about that, um, you don't ever want to have that many um, of one genus um, in the cemetery. Yeah. Well, so. Um, well, because if they're all, they were all, some, we do have the Asian Longhorn Beetle, which is coming in and killing the maples. Um, yeah, if you have something like that come in, they would decimate half the population of the cemetery. It would really change the look of it. Yeah. So, and that's true for pretty much any landscape, um, but it's definitely true in cemeteries, because I do see a lot of that. Um, but you've got this other mix of tree species, which is helping to counteract that, um, what we call a monoculture. So. So we have, since the survey, had uh, several of the senior maples removed, several of the senior uh, spruce removed as well, right. just because of disease mm -hmm. that's gone, which has created opportunity for infill, of which we were working with your suggestions about what, what to infill actually with, which is kind of interesting. Great, perfect. 
Mm. And then you have this, I just wanted to mention, yeah, you have this yeah. knotweed for me, which is, I think, you can say a little... Mike, like, you want to talk about knotweed? <laughs> well, you know, must have knotweed's a funny thing, because it's, it's a mixed blessing in a weird way, because the, the river has been so yep. wild with the rains and so on, that the knotweed, in some cases, is holding the river bank together. Because a lot of the other trees are going, as you talked about, trees yeah. passing. Right. In some ways, it's the knotweed that's keeping the riverbank in place. So we so, don't want it, but on the other hand, we don't want the riverbank to wash away either. So it's not 100% linear in terms right. of right, right, right. Just on the riverbanks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you'll see. Not on the stone side. Right. You'll see in the last two weeks, all of the bank shelf has been cut clean again of that right. weed. Now, of the of the above ground knotweed, that doesn't go to Mike's point because you know five feet away down slope, it's still there. And it can't. It's it's rugged. The other is, is uh, the climbing. Some of the climbing vines, whether they be white grape or or bittersweet. Well, the bittersweet or every every couple of years we walk that bank and just cut it and get it out of the canopy in in uh, in an attempt to deal with the canopy. You know, help the canopy out a little bit. Yeah. But you know, it's it is what it is. It's a yeah, it's I mean the knotweed. Yeah, the, I mean they're both bad. The knotweed is the, it's still in the first, which means it runs underground. And right. You really have to dig it out. Yeah, make it go away. So interesting. Okay. All right. Um, okay, and then the markers, which are just wonderful. Um, there are hundreds of monuments and grave markers dating from the 1700s to today. Um, and surprisingly, I was shocked actually that so many of these stones are in good condition. Um, so much are at this age and this location. I, you know, we can see hundreds that are just, um, you know, falling, leaning, falling over, broken, delaminated. I mean, the problems are really can be really severe. And the, this was really a surprise to me. And I, you know, as a student, great. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, in in 2018. MCC identified 61 stones that required conservation treatment, and their feeling is that you kind of look at a five-year window. Um, you know, you don't want to. Um, you need to figure out which stones are the most hazardous. Either they're hazardous to people or they're hazardous to themselves, and those are the ones you really want to focus on. And you know, in five or ten years, you might come back, and there might be more horse hazard horses, right. hazard stones. But um, you can't, you know expect to go in and like treat the entire cemetery at one spot because it would be impossible. And you know, I'm seeing like you have lichen growing on the stones. Mm -hmm. That's actually a symbol of fresh air, believe it or not. Um, really? It doesn't tend to grow on stones in areas where there's not a lot of air circulation and they like that. Um, so yeah, you see it a lot by the ocean for that reason. That's interesting. Yeah, I so um, this is, you know, pretty good. I would say good news on the stones. And then I think um, the, the largest um, concern, and this was what you raised, and it was my, the last item on the program was infill. And I was using that word, it sounds like you know, housing, but it's not, um, because it's a form of housing. But the traditional form <laughs> of burial, which is full, gas, full casket interment, um, is becoming a lot less popular. And I'm sure that's, I know that's true Absolutely. here, and it's, it's a na national, national trend. And, because you have um, land constraints, we need to think of a different way to approach cremation, which is the popular form of um, interment. And so the traditional, what we've been doing is, you know, you take a normal uh, full casket plot and you allow like four interments in it, four cremations in it, and that's just a colossal waste of space. So the idea is to try to introduce new interment options that will blend with this historic landscape that we've just learned about. Mm -hmm. So that um, might just move to our recommendations. When you know this area, right? <laughs> do, you, do you manage the cemetery sales? I, I do not. Oh, mm -hmm. I just uh, have family in Right there, right there, right oh, there. Yeah. Now there's a marker right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So. We get a little different Great. than the, the most 
trees, addressing the trees, and uh, our recommendations were, um, you know, fairly simple. One is to plant, if you're going to plant trees now, to plant them along the outer edges, just to help define the cemetery. It's not fenced at the moment, so the trees can help uh, give it more of a, um, an enclosure and also a sense of limits. Um, we recommended removing the lower limbs of trees in some of the areas so that you could open up views across the landscape. Um, some of that work's been done. And yeah, yeah, so, yeah, great, that's fantastic. And then I mentioned Western Edge, which I think is just so important. Um, if that can be selectively cleared um, with approval, that would be a really great thing to do. And then the tree survey just um, it would benefit from an update of that too, just because trees age. There was a recommendation about the fence. Now there was, I mentioned at one time, that there was a fence that was built around the cemetery. Um, we don't know what the character of that was, but we do know that these fence posts do exist along the north edge. And these could be reused. And they could either stay here, or you could move them to the east edge, which is really your most visible edge from the road. When you drive in off of Main Street down the long road, you see you know, this thing in the distance, and the fence would help you know, kind of define that. And you could add more, and you could leave them just as posts, or you could also connect them mm -hmm. with some kind of material, like a, a steel chain or something like that, which has been done. So, um, and I would recommend doing this in phases, just because fencing is expensive. So starting with the east edge, and then moving on to the north and the south. Could I ask a question? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. I believe those posts were on the north side and they were kind of moved yeah. because they were sporadic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they moved These are to, the the, north side. to the entrance, yeah. Right. Yeah. right? Right. And I also believe that the fence around the Williams house in Old Deerfield was at yeah. the cemetery and, and oh, moved really? there. How did you find that out? Um, I, it's just always been something that. Lord. We've known, um, we had a resident, Bill Hubbard, who was a great historian, and um, the Sunderland Whipping Post is at the Kumtuk um, Valley, and some Erastus Salisbury Fields paintings, mm -hmm. and if there was something to do with him, I thought he was the one that had said that that huh, interesting. was there. Yeah. Um, so, that so then it would be a, uh, that's a picket fence. Okay. Yeah. And I'm sure the maintenance of it, and especially I think it was in the '60s where the cemetery was overgrown, and the Boy Scouts kind of came in, and the Boy mm -hmm. Scouts put the shed in and the flagpole, oh, no and way. started the Memorial Day, and you know to spruce it up. Mm -hmm. um, so I, th I think that's could have been when yeah. that happened when it was moved just mm -hmm. to. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, you know, one, one reason why I would not recommend a picket fence is because, a wood picket fence, is because of the maintenance. And one, it's expensive to build, but two, um, they need to either be painted or, um, it, and then if they're not painted, they probably will decay faster. So I recommend something a little more permanent just because we'll take the maintenance headache away. So even these posts have got yeah, in, in, embedded, embedded, embedded hardware in it, so they held something. Yeah, exactly. So, that'd be a great CPA project. Um, the roads. It's okay. the best road in the whole cemetery. Yeah. You got the one picture. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm an advocate for reducing the amount of paving. You went to my lecture yes. the last week yes. that I gave yeah. about this. Um, and there aren't that much, there's not much paving in this property, but some cemeteries are working so much paving. It's just like, well, we have to have, you know, for all the people that need a place to park, and like, how many people come here? Yeah. <laughs> like once, maybe once a week for a, you know, funeral, but really, for a burial? Yeah. So, um, when I worked at the Saratoga National Cemetery, uh, for the Saratoga National Cemetery design, which was years and years ago, I worked on a veteran cemetery that was designed um, for the National Cemetery in Saratoga next to the battlefield. The, um, the National Cemetery System has a guideline that we adhere to, and that is that you, you want to have a circulation route within 200 feet um, of, the, of a grave. 
So, you know, we looked at the layout of the cemetery, and I think that you could really <laughs> eliminate, this is the northernmost road. Mm -hmm. um, if you go on, I can, um, well, I'm gonna show you more at the end, but I think that you could close the two northern roadways and then create an access to the seven, southern section, and even consider closing the main central um, road that goes through the middle and making that a walking path, but we'll see that in a minute. But this would reduce the amount of paving you would have to do. Um, it's just, again, it's expensive. It's hell to have callous fingers. So I don't think this bad building is that bad, but I think it, it's in a very awkward position, especially now that you're developing the area to the south of it. And so I think relocating that to an area um, where it's accessible, but it's a little, you know, it's out of the way of the burials would be, um, and it's also blocking the view of the Holyoke Range. It's just not a good location. I don't, I mean, I don't know what the condition of this building is. It doesn't, I mean, it has some, you know, decay on it, but I don't think it's irreparable. What do we use it for, Scott, exactly? We used to use it to keep the lawnmower in there when we did it ourselves. But yeah, there used so to be tools in there. And there used um, to be tools when you dug yeah. the hole. Yeah. yeah. Not so much anymore. There's there's just some detritus from the cemetery. Yeah. Uh, okay. So then you could eliminate it if you don't need it. I mean, I think this is, was the location of the original Hearst House mm -hmm. from what we've seen. Mm -hmm. um, so that would make sense that they would have put it there. Maybe there was a flat, you know. It is a I think sense. that was further up on the other side of the road. Oh, I don't think this oh. had been flat then. It does have a, a poured cement slab and mm -hmm. it is watertight, with the exception of, you know, the entrance. Yeah. You need some TLC for sure. But yeah. right. But if you think about it from effective use, the question is, what would, what, we talk about the future, what would you use it for? Right. Most of most of what goes on in the cemetery now is contracted services. Right. right. So the crews come over their own stuff. Then. Yeah. And yeah. what about eliminating the waste or the right. okay. on the side? Craving is contracted. Okay. So you probably don't need a building yeah. like that. Right. One more thing to maintain. Okay. Maybe someone would want to buy it. <laughs> It's not bad. You could push it, no, push it about 250 yards south, Mike. You could use it. Yeah. I could grab it with the forks on the track. It would go away, away quickly. Yeah. It's it's like, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Um, right, okay. Monuments and the markers. This is not one of the monuments that was identified as needing treatment, but um, I love this monument. It's such so striking. So I wanted to. And this was probably the Hubbard family, right? The, yeah. the person who. Um, was here at one time. Um, as I mentioned, there were identified in the assessment 61 markers that needed treatment. MCC broke them down into priorities. Uh, priority one are the most hazardous, so these are ones that are broken mm -hmm. or fallen over mm -hmm. or are really, really um, delaminating that, that's what slate marks their students. And no, the ones that are red. Yes, I'm yeah. about to show that picture. Okay, okay. And then, uh, Two is you know a little less hazardous, and three would be the least hazardous, but still needing treatment. Yeah. And I have MCC break them down into manageable uh, chunks because it, conservation, if it's done properly by a trained conservator, mm -hmm. is expensive. But it's what you want to do with these stones that are irreplaceable. Okay. You're developing a relationship with this thing, It's kind of callous. callous. Yes. There it is. Nothing yeah, I so can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the map that um, MCC and I worked on. And you can see that most of the stones, this is the old section. So most of them are in here. Mm -hmm. And that would make sense. Um, there are a few. This is the Victorian era. Mm -hmm. And these are the more you know contemporary. So it, there aren't any there. And um, so it's a very manageable um, group. So just having this map up, what I'm suggesting is that you may want to remove these two and these two roads. Yep, and yep. then keep a loop road yep. just around it. And this could become a walking path. Because you're not, you know, people might come to see these because they're really cool, but they're, and they may be a, rel a distant relative many years later. But um, there are no new interments going on here. So you don't have to get a equipment or cars or anything like that. And you've got your perimeter road to make that happen. What we do see is people hustling down that center road to get out to the river road for their river road time in their car for whatever of that course. is. For whatever that is. Right. It's a straight line. Yes, right. Couldn't be better. Yeah. So, so if I could 
the stones in these areas that are red, mm -hmm. whether they've been repropped or braced or the recommendations were about hanging. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that's been, that's been straight. straight. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. I think though, I could be wrong, but I think when you're saying there's a loop around the perimeter, on the very north side, that's not a road. This one here, Wendy? You're right, that's not a road. That's right. the outermost road on the other side of those stones. Okay. Okay. So. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, you're right, because you're right. This space. So, describing the one to be eliminated, that potentially, that would be one. And then this is actually so that would be the so outside because this right this, there, this yeah. road right this right here is actually the perimeter of the cemetery. Right. Trees the I think corner. where you wanted the trees. This isn't a road actually. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. So, okay. So, yeah. There, so there is one more road in the center. That, I mean, you know, near that one. Got it. Yeah. Right. That's not on here. I'm pretty sure it's it's accurate. It's, okay. It's, yeah. There's two to the side. There's two from the center road, right? Um, One, two. And then the outer. And the outer road. Then the outer road. You're just not showing graves here. There's right. a road, yeah, a road yeah, on yeah. the left. Well, no, I think that, right? I don't. I don't. I think that's Mike's field where it says One, two, three, four, five, six. Over there. Right. Yeah. And then yeah. on the left, isn't there? If that again, the furthest road on the left is actually on next to my field. No, no, no. This is, yeah, there are a whole bunch of interments in here. There are, okay. Show. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. we, the okay. MSCD didn't evaluate these, and they okay. also didn't Great. evaluate those got either. It. Okay. Oh, got, um, it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, these because. These are the roads, right? Oh, right, right now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I, I still okay. don't think, the last thing in the cemetery are stones, no road. Mm -hmm. Right, so there would be interments here. Right, but there's no road right. that goes around it. Right. The loop right. is, okay, right. that's I was just getting. Yes, that's what's confusing. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so there are tournaments here, yeah. and then it just is field. So yeah. the track number yeah. And the same with here, there are yeah. tournaments yeah. here, okay. and field. Except this is much you. bigger. Right. So right. total number of rows is represented clearly. Right. Right. Yeah. And what you're right. suggesting, the recommendation may be is that. Those two unused. Those. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. so I'm still I'm confused because then you'll have no loop. No, the no, loop the road is still there. Yes, yeah, because so you're yeah. actually your your plots are over seven and eight or six and seven. Right. You're on the right side. Okay, yeah. so that's not the end. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So those two roads that um, you only go down there every day, Martha. They're <laughs> they're, um, <laughs> they're so unused. In, in yeah. Their, those roads are. Yeah. That's a no-brainer. The yeah. one in the middle is going to cause is is. Although is if the, you leave it as, as just a walking path. I think can't you? I you thought that it. was a, a recommendation to. Just put well, like a chain say, across yeah, we're gonna travel. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're gonna, gonna say. No, you got it, Graham. This is is there. Yeah, I have it. This this I shouldn't have shown the graves on map because it doesn't okay. show the whole. Yeah, I just we were okay. thinking it was the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, right. You got it. And, and so. Agreed. So there are graves out yes, here, the right. and, and, and there. Yeah, the right. Right. What we're right. seeing here is a road layout for the right. space. Right. So that makes perfect sense. Gotcha. Okay. And so one of the recommendations may be to discontinue make walking paths or create space for infill? We're going to see. Yep, let's see. <laughs> He's jumping ahead. I'm trying That's to get okay. my finger to work. <laughs> He's jumping. Oh. That's not this one. I do that. Uh -oh. Now you've gone and done it. Okay, so so this is where the, this is the thing you know, the new internment areas. Um, there is some demand still for pro casket burials, from what I understand, and I know especially older people, people of certain faiths prefer that. Um, so it's um, almost been three to one in the last couple of years. I believe that. Yeah. yeah. We have a full tournament going in, in next week. Second this year. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's not a lot. Yeah. Um, so. Other ideas, cremation walk, which I'm going to show you, a garden, and then a scattering garden. And these are all different ways of, other than the full casket. I'm not recommending a columbarium structure. It's not yet. Right. We saw one of those in Japan. Like that. <laughs> okay. So here we have um, 
the closing of the roads. And this is, um, so what I'm recommending here, and again, this is, can, can be modified in a lot of different ways, but here's the road that we're gonna keep. And this is the whole north area. So we would eliminate this road here and eliminate this road here, and then the, when the burials are in here too. And this would become either um, two-person graves or single-person graves, depending on what you think the demand would be. Um, if this is, if you're thinking that full casket burials are not going to be popular, then this could be, you know, turned into uh, cremation sites too. Um, but I don't. My point is, I don't think there's any need for you to have cars you know rolling all around here it's just not it's a lot of asphalt it's a lot of maintenance um, it's really unnecessary this isn't a very big I mean this is 40 feet right here so we're talking one two three it's well within 200 feet of the graves that are here so and those roads are eight to ten eight to ten feet wide oh, ten, ten feet ten feet wide yeah. right and then we our, our, our burial our Four plot sizes, 12 by 15. 12 by 15. And we are selling them now. We are encouraging people who are interested in cremations to talk about yeah. halves, and then halves of halves. Yeah. The only challenge we're running into uh, is in uh, long-term care, perpetual care. Mm -hmm. And then it's, it's markers versus flat stone. It's the complexity of the wishes of the, of the, the family and well, how do we ensure that we don't have this mosaic of stones that have got to be dealt with from a, a uh, in particular, a mowing perspective, right? right? Yeah. Well, so that you get equipment in there at some point, and it can't be a, it can't be this zigzag of pattern. So yeah, it's really it's difficult. I mean, what, there are a lot of ways it can be dealt with. Mm -hmm. Just to, um, I ne remember now doing this. So the road is ten feet wide, and I just made it slightly wider. I mean, I did make these twelve foot. Yep. Um, so, so that's that's one option for a full mm -hmm. casket. Yep. This is the center road, which I believe comes in like right here. Mm -hmm. I did have a great photo of this. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it's just one more road. Yeah. This one here. Yeah. 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 Um, so this one, this would be a really, could be a really lovely feature in the cemetery uh, when you drive in and that you have um, this, this very straight linear walkway, but the walkway could be lined with a curbing that could serve for inscriptions, and then behind the curbing, placing um, cremation plots. And so you go like one deep cremation, 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 and mm -hmm. for people, and I see Hash marks here, like to scale of sorts. Yes. Right. There were, I, d I did um, 12, 12 by 24. 24. That's yeah. about right. Yeah. yeah. And then the flag could become a feature in that instead of just kind of being plopped in a sort of afterthought area. Mm -hmm. And there could be cremations around that. Um, this is a, something that's been done at Mount Auburn Cemetery. Um, they closed an old road there and did this exact thing, and it's been really, really popular. It's beautiful. And. This is representing the center road, right? This is mm -hmm. this is cemetery road yes. right here. Yeah. It's slightly off center. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. And then the final one is the south end, and so I've relocated the shed, which is right here now up to here. Mm -hmm. uh, with this one, I do think a loop road is important, and because what you're gonna what you would do is you would create this beautiful sort of you know very um, Loose kind of you know uh, picturesque loop road. Um, you know, continue the planting of trees. You get some views to the Holyoke Range, and you could put this all over again to um, full casket burials. Right now, the plotted area is. I'm sorry, the plotted area is here, mm -hmm. so it's basically in here. Yeah. This area here is all unplotted. At least it was five years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And. Um, so having um, this roadway, you could create a little scattering garden, which is uh, just a place where people put their ashes in the ground, and then there's usually some kind of a communal marker, but it doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. Marker, markers to commemorate. Um, and then this area here could all be you know, cremation plots. And it opens up a lot, of, a lot of possibilities. And so south of that is the spare 
right. formerly yes. known as asparagus. So okay. we're, we're exactly. describing this area here. Correct. And right now there aren't many outliers out on that part. Right. We have some, we have discussed as trustees that in this corner, so shed, mm -hmm. I'm assuming, mm -hmm. Out in this space right here, we've reserved some of that area for requests for green burials. And we're just kind of like allocating it specific to green burials for people who ask. And we are not a green burial cemetery, but we have been asked. So we have some commitment to this lower space. We don't want to, we don't want to fall into the trap of advertising as a green burial cemetery because then we'd be overrun, period. Yeah, there are very many. So you're recommending we make a loop all the way around so next to the asparagus there'd be a road coming back. Back to this side, Mike. I think I see a corner here, but yeah. Yeah. I think you do have a road here. Or it's a was, there was a road, like a dirt road. It's like uh, a it's in my yeah. Field. Yeah. 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 Field. It's a yeah, farm road. Right. But I think I worry about on the riverbank if we're already plotted out there that we can no longer get a road. Yeah, no, you're here. right, Mike. So there, you, to Mike's point, we're plotted out. This mm -hmm. is represented as completely filled. Mm -hmm. um, oh, God. So that's so another one my finger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could just use this the whole time. So this is all full. Yeah, this is all full, but there is space beyond mm -hmm. those on the shore of the right, river. because even before we were trustees, there was talk of putting a road. Additional road. Uh, it would have to be delicately there. done. Yeah, 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 and that's why that yeah. section is, mm -hmm. has always yeah. been open, because mm -hmm. a road was going to go out to your field. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So these are just, I'm just trying to show the yeah. possibilities. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, it could all, if, if, if you wanted to act on any of these, it would have to obviously be, sure. you know, designed in detail. A lot more specificity and accuracy. So, in your um, experience, Martha, the scatter field is that uh, scatter uh, garden? Scatter yes. garden, okay. scatter field. Is that something that's trending, or is it? Um, you know, I've seen it in a number of different places. Um, I like it. I think it's it's a nice way yeah. for people to. They want to be in the sun, you know, or take a little bit, you yeah, know, you really have the alcohol instead of throwing it in the river, which probably a lot of people do. Not know. Well, I, I think <laughs> I hear of people like going to family pots and putting some ashes, you know. Yeah. So I think it would help alleviate maybe that too. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and I think um, it does give a place for people who don't have money for right, right. all that stuff. Exactly. I think it's very democratic. I, yeah, I, I like it. I, I think that's just a, a solving a problem that's there, but we don't really think of how you can solve it, but you know it's it, it's an issue for some. Mm -hmm. so I, I do like that. Yeah, and I think it has to be nicely designed. So yeah. I know, again, at Mount Auburn in Cambridge, they have a beautiful area that's called Spruce Knoll, which is basically a spruce woodland. Mm -hmm that um, they underplanted and the scattered garden is along um, pine needle covered paths to the woodland. Nice. And then they're just little markers that, yeah. you know, tablets that have the names of the yeah. interior on them. Mm -hmm. It's very, it's very, um, it's a very light touch. As we go out there there. and see that. Yeah. yeah. If you haven't ever been there, the cemetery yeah. trustees, you should go because it's really beautiful. Field trip. Yeah. If you're ever in the Boston area, yeah. and it's open to the public. Our oldest son was born in a hospital. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I've been there Actually, many times. Yes. I really appreciate that. Scan. Yeah. Okay. And that's, I think, it's just one more slide thanking you all. Yes. And I'm happy to um, take any questions. Now, <laughs> Kat, what do you think? Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Love it. Academy Award for a local theater, a local presentation. Right. Presented by, well done. So when does this get broadcast? Do you know that question? Are you guys officially done, by the way? No, no, not yet. I, I got uh, questions. Yeah, no, this, she's going. I, just, go <laughs> I, I do think, though, that this cemetery is a big walking ground. I, I, right, I think many right. people go down there. Um, it's also, um, in the, the National Register of Historic Places, right? And 
um, the roads. I, I can understand like blocking the roads off so that cars don't hurt the stones, but I do think it is a great walking path for, for people, people with dogs. Um, I, I know Dan and Scott go down there all the time, and I don't think that there is much, if any, dog waste down there. Um, yeah, most people do. No, people you, get, you know, so yeah. it, it's all kind of very respectful. And Kids learn to ride their bikes down there. They yes, do. Right. I, I did, I did <laughs> see, when I was working there five years ago, I did see a woman with a standard poodle, and the poodle was sitting on top of that table too. Oh, 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 good. That's not good. No. 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 Huh. Um, so it's not all sweet. It looked like it was like you know, getting rid of the dog back. Right, right. <laughs> Stretched out, you know. The... I, I, I've seen skateboarders on the Veterans Memorial, too. Oh, like, yeah. uh, you need skate stoppers. Anyway, go ahead. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I think the, Bill Park in Boston, the right? roads benefit the community more than just the cemetery. Uh -huh. Yep. Um, so, you know, blocking them off, especially that center one, if, you know, we're trying to keep the damage down on stones, but still allowing walkers mm -hmm. to walk through. Mm -hmm. And um, it looks like the use on the south side, if some plan that's come up, came up with um, cremations and uh, scattered, scattered, scattered garden, garden. Mm -hmm. that maybe the roads could stay and you know I mean I'm not saying repaving them because they kind of look kind of nice the way they are you know I don't sort of crushed gravel at that point they're a real you trip you don't them. plow in there do you yeah. no yeah so you know, there's absolutely no reason why you need asphalt and you yeah. can do trap rock or you know something um, it's so flat you don't a lot of some engineers have erosion problems because the roads they're on a hill and then but you don't have that problem here. So you have a lot more leeway, and I would just remove the asphalt. Now, of course, people are walking, they probably want to be on asphalt, but it's, I mean, the purpose is, it's a place of interment. That's, yeah. to, to your point, Wendy, keeping it available for walking and light wheels, right? There's a, there's, a, there's an inherent tension there between, you know, paving it slick versus making it accessible. Right, it, it's like a park. To, yeah. You know, it does have a, a multi-purpose, mm -hmm. and it's nice. You know, I, I don't think like, encouraging it to be a part. You know, but just being used for what it is now seems safe to the cemetery and um, a place that people really enjoy going to. Mm -hmm. I can see advantages shutting off that center road, just to slow down traffic there comes down there um, right. and making them go around mm -hmm. be a yeah so favorable but that is when you said that you don't want to eliminate the people love to walk that and, you know they sent me a note about that yeah, but it's, uh, it's still able to walk it's it. still I mean, a walking path and those roads yeah. will get you a little bit extra if you're trying to get to the like five mile mark <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> i've been there and i'll i'll do the road a couple of times yeah, yeah. just to get to my Right. So you know, if you if you don't see a need, a future need for many full casket burials, then maybe what you do is concentrate on the cremation burials and mm -hmm. right. the center road and and the new section of the yeah. south and focus there. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's a uh, cemetery in East Hampton and uh, Main Street going in town, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they have a cremation section, mm -hmm. and it is all flat, mm -hmm. all flat marker. You park and you walk. And it's a series of S's. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Whoever did that did a great job. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Some of those, yeah. oh. Oh. And you're going to end up with, if you have to take those two northern roads, eliminate them, and make them full burials, you're going to end up with an older section of Victorian with two lines of modern mining. That's, really, that's a really good point. Um, a stylistic point. That's I mean, a great point, mm -hmm. Mike. So it's a bad style. No style points in that one. Yeah. But, um, I mean, that's the reality. Mm -hmm. yep. so. yes. Yeah. Or again, with the with the tilt toward cremations, keeping that as a focus. It's like so, where is cremations? It? Obviously, would be yeah. less visual impact. Yeah. And this and the, the scatter garden. I keep saying scatter field. But 
Yeah, I did. Scatter garden. <laughs> but I love it. I think yeah. it's absolutely yeah, brilliant. Yeah. yeah. It's with the maze towers. That's going to be my scatter garden. Scatter garden. Scatter garden? <laughs> 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 yeah, just, the big Lebowski just get up there. No, he <laughs> Will's got that rocket already in his yeah, backyard. It does. <laughs> <laughs> he does. You know, somebody put it on the exhaust at the top. The thing that's nice about the scattering garden is if you have a some kind of a, mark, a marker, communal marker, or individual, or probably not individual, but you know, smaller um, group markers. Um, you know, I always say to people, to say, oh, I don't care. I'm going to go. I'm just going to throw myself in the river and or go to the river and you know, I'm right gone. There. So I don't care. You know. Yeah, right, right, right. But the thing is, you people do care. You right. know, your children care. Your relatives care. And it's you know, my father-in-law was. Um, he was his ashes were um, scattered in Block Island sometimes when I was in Rhode Island, and there's no marker for him. Yeah. And I just think that's so sad, you know, because his great grandchildren like they'll never be able to even like I, there's something identifying with it. So when my husband's mother died, she was from Iowa. I had his name put on her stone at, okay. the, at the cemetery in Iowa. Yeah. Um, just because. Yeah. It needs to be there, you know. I think. It's a funny, it's a funny so, thing. I mean, my family, we were very religious, so my grandparents are buried down in Hartsfield. No one's ever visited their grave. Where are they? In Hartsfield, New York. No one's ever visited their grave. And, you know, same with my grandma, other families on Martha's Vineyard. No one ever visits their graves. I've been to Martha's Vineyard, but it's just, it's kind of a New England thing, I think. I don't know. Hmm. But it's not... Or maybe just your family. Maybe your <laughs> family. I don't know. It's, it's, it's funny. They're kind of very forgotten. Not forgotten, but we just don't go to them. And those spaces. <laughs> Interesting. It's, it's all a different mix. Of yeah. yeah. Everyone is and, a cult and a cultural piece. So our daughter-in-law is a national holiday where they live, and it's... Tombs, tomb sweeping, tomb sweeping days. Right. Is really? this in Taiwan? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Tomb yes. sweeping days. Okay. You go and you, you, and you, every you family, everybody goes. Everybody it's goes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's an honoring the dead. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Wow. Yeah. In August, which is month of the dead. But yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, well, thank you, Martha. Thank you. Yeah. That was very nice. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Really do. FCAT, I think we're going to be good at this point. If there's any more comments from Trustees, no. well, we're gonna chairman, gonna, uh, have a town clerk, a Martha, all right, FCAT, thanks so much, I really appreciate it.